looking. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. Look whose turn it is to be addressed. This is Serata Stylus Philippinensis. Look at this little guy go. Check this out. All those roots in there. Oh, yes, I was patient. Sometimes I find that difficult because I want to get really down and into the orchids and get them into a setup that I can understand better. But now is the time. I can see all these little roots growing. And eventually I won't have the humidity in the air that it likes. I can do the heat. I can do the cold. It comes from the Philippines around about 700 to up to 2,000 meters. So I can do its conditions with the exception of humidity. So my thought process is a bigger pot for it than it would normally need. I have crocked it with lava rock so that I can make it much, much shallower. And I am going to be filling it with Akadama and terrarium grit in order for it to have a lot of humidity around in the pot. That's the idea. It has been living in this Greek yogurt container, and you can see how tall the container is opposed to the orchid that was inside. So it had a lot of humidity all around it while it was in this container. I don't know if I'm going to be able to simulate that with all of the akadama that I'm going to use. I'm gonna try. I'm going to try. So first I'm going to put my terrarium grit into a little bowl. And then I'm going to start mixing in akadama to see if this is enough. And I'm thinking that this would be like the media to fill the little pot with and possibly just put a top layer of akadama only so that the aeration around the root continues while it's in the pot, while they are in the pot. But then I have a heavy concentration of akadama and high humidity on the surface for the orchid to create kind of like a microclimate for it. That's the idea anyway. So this little guy or this young little lady came to me from let me check if I'm in shot. From the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. So, so happy. I didn't bring any scissors. I do not want to be separating all these out. I wonder if I do need to bring some clippers to clean up a little bit. Or... This could help me with humidity in the pot as well. You see, this one likes 80 to 90% humidity with a lot of airflow. I can really do all its requirements except for the humidity. So I have to be a little bit more aggressive on the water retentive media that I'm going to be using to give it that humidity around it that it appreciates. So I think, oh, look at these roots growing down into the media. This is good. You see all these little roots growing down into what are old roots, sort of. I don't think all of them are. Can you see the little hairy texture that they have? I am not going to be cutting anything off at all. Sorry for the clanging of the gate in the background. Oh no, there's not going to be any cleaning of this root ball at all. I'm going to make it work for me and help. Isn't this adorable? <laughs> ah, I love orchids. And help me with the humidity. Once it has settled in, I got this in end of November 2020. So once it has settled in to my climate, I will actually be able to grow this one outside. 
It can take my low temperatures in the winter. The one thing I have very much in mind, and I'm very, very aware of, is the fact that Akadama has a tendency or is reputed to break down when it comes into contact with too cold temperatures. Whatever that means, I cannot find specifically what they say about too cold. What is too cold? Is it freezing? I don't get freezing. Is it five degrees Celsius that it starts to break down? So this is going to be quite interesting for me to see, not this year, but by the come, by come winter, come winter, if it continues to do so well, I will have this one growing outside. And then we can see in a year's time how the Akadama has, if it has, deteriorated. I have a feeling, worst case scenario, which is what I like to always go by, I can get two years minimum out of this because orchids don't normally have radical climates to contend with. So whatever they decide or call as cold, define as cold, for me, that might mean that my Akadama is going to last much, much longer. I am very, very conscious of the fact that the water has to run clear out of the bottom of the pot or through the, in this case, the semi-hydro holes. When I see the water coming and running a little bit cloudy, then it's a, it would be for me a sign the Akadama is starting to break down, fall apart. And that is when I will start to intervene. As long as the water runs clear, I'm good. And I think this little guy is going to like this, I think. Now, for the meantime, it's going to live inside. I'm not going to expose it to any kind of temperatures outdoors. Not just yet. But we are having some very warm temperatures the next four days. I'm still keeping it inside, under the blurple lights, where it has been living since its arrival. And what I've been doing very, very carefully, based on the climate and the temperatures I have outside when the terrace door is open, I've been misting it from the top, even in the winter, which was kind of scary, scary thought, but I think that with the aeration and the airflow that I did get on the days that I did mist it, I got away with it. So there is no rotting and there's a lot of new growth. A lot of new growth, which is fantastic. You can see all these fresh green little leaves, all the ones that are a little bit lighter in color. That's all new stuff. That's great. I lost the first one that the orchid room sent me, which I will, you know, when you get an orchid, you, I just felt so bad. But this one's looking fine so far, but you see how much Hakadama is on the top. I'm hoping that the water retention of this media will be actually advantageous in order to keep a really humid environment around the top of the orchid, especially for my summers. If not, then this example has proved something to me and I can always cut off the bottom of a container like this. If I use something for a clear plastic bottle, that's a thought, clear plastic bottle and make like a sleeve for it, just so that it has its little microclimate, terrarium styli. So let me water it in. You see how cloudy that water is? Yeah, now that is fresh Akadama. So I've already rinsed this Akadama out that we are using today. But it's possible that my mixing it up with the terrarium grit has made it go a little bit more disintegrated. My other pots that I use Akadama in, the water is running clear. So this is probably from the manipulation and mixing it with a terrarium grit that has actually given it sort of the, the cloudy look. Now, 
This is the cloudy look is not something I'm concerned about today. In a year's time or two years time, if I get a cloudy look, then that for me will be the signal the Akadama is breaking down. It's a nice warm day outside today. Very, very nice, pleasant temperatures. So if you're concerned about how much water I'm pouring in there, there's enough aeration going on. I have about 55% humidity today outdoors. It's gonna be fine just to give it a good, good flush through so that I can get somewhat clear water running through the pot. I need a clear water indicator for me as a reference. I can't just leave it now and walk away, oh, it's a bit cloudy. I need that clear water reference to be 100% sure what is going on inside the pot when the time comes. And I think we're there. I can see on the surface here that I've got a lot more like brownish material, but that's also quite normal. But the water is now running through clear. So I have an indicator now, I have a starting point to see how this orchid does. And I'm super excited because these roots now, these little ones that you can see running through the pot right here, these are now my indicators. Very, very happy to get little Ceratostylus philippinensis into a pot. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I've got sort of the right judgment with regards to its little environment here. And again, if not, something plastic, bottle-like thing will be taped over the top to make myself a dome, at least partially. Even if I just do three quarters and I don't have to tape the bottle, I can just slice that part and then wrap it and let it snap into place. And a little bit can be open on the other side. That's not the issue. I'm very excited for this little orchid, especially seeing how well it's done since it's been in my care. I haven't touched it. And now that we're starting to get into spring and it has kicked into action, perfect time, perfect time. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care, stay safe, bye.